Tu as les mains Tu es chiant et t'es Ah. You sure Ok. <rire> Mom, I'm coming home. Train Nico is leaving Hami. I'm here in Turfan, which is in the eastern part of Xinjiang, China. You can just look at this view. The major oasis along the northern route of the Silk Road. The next one being Hami, and then on to Dunhuang. People on the Silk Road thousands of years ago were already pushing limits. It's great to see that someone from here is still pushing in a different way. Take a look at this. It's like the bazaars, the modern bazaars happening now on the field, live. I'm shocked. <laughs> and all these oases are vital spots that allowed people to, to fuel in some ways. Even today, with its location, it can really connect cultures in the East and West. Just like it did during the Silk Road. It's like the new era of the Silk Road. My, my, my. Tianda Shigua, the Shigua. The frontier of China, the heart of Eurasia. So I'm here in Turfan. I heard it was the driest and hottest area in all China. But when coming here, I was really surprised to see how much green this land was. It's like an oasis in the desert. I'm Hasna. I come from Morocco, from Casablanca. I came here to China to be working in architecture. I've never been to a grape field before, and it's really lovely. I can't stop eating. I'm in Gaochang district of Turpan and I'm going to meet Ubaidullah. He's a web celebrity who started his uh, e-commerce company selling agricultural products. What's interesting about Ubei is that he would take a traditional business model and turn it into a modern one, which is selling on live stream. I felt like the same thing happened. Actually, the Silk Road kind of um, inspired the world into this connectiveness between cultures to exchange their goods. Turfan is extremely important because it was a place where various cultures came together, where traders also came together to sort of refuel. And Jiaohe is a city that epitomizes that. And this city has been here for over 2,000 years. In this one place, we have, for example, the Gaochang Kingdom, the Yangtze Frontier Command of Tang Dynasty. All these layers still exist today, leaving traces of these civilizations. And this one place symbolizes the range of cultures that came together along the Silk Road and blended here in Turfan. My name is Neil Schmidt. I'm an American and a historian of China. As a researcher, I work at an archaeological site in Dunhuang. So this city is surrounded all the way around by rivers, which makes it a natural fortress. Jiaohe, the geography is ideal. You would come out of central China, up the Hashu Corridor, to Dunhuang. Then the next major oasis is Hami, and then after that is Turfan. And all these oases are positioned between the Tian Shan Mountains, so they're vital spots and crucial spots for travel. I'm here in Hami Locomotives Depot. Even today, Hami is still an important hub between Eastern and Western China, just like it did during the Silk Road times. My name is Nico de Rouge, I'm French. I specialize in reportage and documentary photography, which takes me around the world. And I will meet Mr. Changxin and his dad. Their family have been train engineers for three generations, from the steam locomotives train to the diesel trains, all the way to the high-speed electric trains. This is me. I the Huh? 
，头灯，那这是头灯。This is to the Yoda. What impressed me most about the diesel train from Shangshim's dad was the complexity of all the buttons and things that you had to master to be able to ride the train. This train is how much? How much? This train is 100 kilos. 100 kilos. Hey, in the past, we went to Wulmuji to ride 13 hours. Wow. I can't imagine being in here for 10 hours in a row. Trying to operate the train being under pressure and stress in these extreme conditions with the wind and the heat. It's impressive. Oh, hey, quite yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll go. Okay, okay. Look, this is our guest. This is my father. They are doing the show. This is our guest. This is our guest. This is our guest. Take a look at this. It's his father, and he's selling his fruits in front of his uh, live stream. It's like the bazaars, the modern bazaars happening now on the field live. I'm shocked. Woman, can you like? Can you? Can you like? Ah. Oh, you like? Wow, wow, wow. Ah, you like him? Ah. Yeah. Hmm. 很甜，很好吃，买买买，甜的西瓜都不是西瓜，甜的。How long have you been doing it? 十个月了。How many fans do you have? 有三十多万吧。Wow. That was not expected. Oh wow. Experts. 你看这个，一起。嗯。Seeing Hubei and his father selling on live stream, I felt like they were inspired by how they used to do it before, back in the time on the bazaars and the Silk Road. We are now in the place of the old Sichu Zhulu, a Shizu Loco. Now, we have a new Sichu Zhulu. This is the new Sichu Zhulu. I'm standing here in the middle of this very large temple. here in the middle of this very large temple, which really epitomizes so much of the Silk Road because monks and merchants go together. It was through the support of merchants and trade that Buddhism flourished along the Silk Road. Turfan has one of the most extreme climates on the planet, but it's because of these extremities that we have so much material preserved from over thousands of years. I'm gonna go see those materials here in the Turfan Museum. Wow, that's crazy. These people are crazy. All these materials we see here are from the Gaocheng period. So this is about the fifth century. And it's thanks to the Silk Road that these materials were able to flow across Eurasia that gave rise to this rich range of cultures, but also the trade that allowed these cultures to flourish. So what it tells us is that here in Turfan, grapes are grown as far back as 2,300 years ago. They represent the transmission of plants along the Silk Road from Western Asia all the way to Turfan and are still grown today. I see here that the women are collecting the grapes and putting them inside boxes, packaging, and I think they are ready for shipping with Obey to sell them online. 物流这块是非常重要的一块。我们新疆的东部，就是吐鲁番、哈密这一块，自古以来就是一个交通要道，然后接通着我们新疆，包括中亚这边。哈密属于新疆的东大门嘛，第一条铁路就是修到哈密。原先是用汽车运的，然后我们电商的加入以后呢，现在是专门冷藏车或者是飞机来拉走。比如说我们的哈密瓜。呃，我们上海的客户，我们今天下单，明天晚上就能在家里面吃到了。Wow. There's often this belief that the Silk Road involved these large caravans of 200 camels that went from Chang'an in China all the way to Samarkand, thousands of miles away, in a single train. That it's some kind of highway that has an occasional on and off ramp. Uh, but in fact, trade didn't work that way. It was very, very local, um, and it flourished. It's very interesting. So on this side, we have coins. 
coins in bronze, gold and silver, trade that was done in silks, in furs, which really sort of embody the wealth of trade that flowed along the Silk Road. For example, during the Tang Dynasty. When they were protectorates, that meant that there were troops out here stationed. And they were paid typically either in coins, grains, or silks. It's not necessarily merchants carrying bags and bags of silk. It's actually payment uh, for services rendered for the troops here who are maintaining the peace. So this small piece of paper is actually a type of passport to allow trade along the Silk Road. People would go from stop to stop presenting these documents. And in these documents, we had information about who was traveling, how many people, and actually what was traded. And these were crucial for maintaining trade and commerce along the Silk Road. Through their family, we can actually witness the evolution of train technology in Xinjiang and China, but also in the world as a whole, from the old technology we used to use to the modern high-speed train we now have. This live stream selling to people and then the shipping and the transportation, all these elements together contribute to the excellent quality of the service of shipping. I can imagine if I was a merchant in the ancient Silk Road days, riding the camel caravans all the way from Hami to Turpan, it would take me days, even weeks. And now, it takes one and a half hours. That's amazing. Turfan and Tami are incredibly vital because they're a major artery east-west. And there was not only a flow of goods, but of course there was a flow of cultures that moved along the Silk Road. I'm here in Tuyugo. And this site has been active for over 1,700 years. And I've heard that a new Buddhist cave has been discovered. And I'm here to meet Mr. Shu, who's been working in this area, doing preservation and conservation work for over 30 years. This is I am now in Upu town, 50 kilometers away from Hami. Motorcycles are very popular in Upu because of the challenge of the environment and the harsh conditions, the rocky roads. As a photographer, this is one of the most exciting topics to shoot. Shooting sports, especially fast motorsports with jumps and slides in the sand and things like this is super visual. But now, one man and his motorcycle are taking this fame to the international level. Hello, <laughs> Dakar it's very famous for being one of the hardest sports competitions around the world because it's very long. You have to go through desert days and days and days. Look at this magic. Ha! It's good. Good. I am in downtown Hami. It's actually a modern city that is highly commercial, but that still has some marks of ancient times. And I'm about to meet Bao Jin, who is a businesswoman who has an embroidery company that is quite popular in the area. And I'm very curious to learn about Hami's embroidery story from I see this peony flower everywhere and all the designs. Many 
属于高档的老乡都非常淳朴。这种就是维吾尔族比较有特色的一个建筑，过街楼底下是路，上面是他们的房子啊,啊。对对，这个老桑树。三十年前他还活着，过去大家养蚕，家里自己做纺织。哈密刺绣最重要的特点就是在绒布上刺绣，它显得比较高档。This is really beautiful, though. 你看，我们越走这个路面就越低，对，呃，就越接近有水的地方。说有水的地方往往是他们生活的重点区域。这个是柴火炮，你看这边放壶。Is it a hat? 这是湖上套的哦， oh. 这是下面这放到上面的。OK， 这个上面它可以喝茶，嗯，然后有棚子，通风也比较好。他喜欢住在房顶，因为炎热嘛。嗯、I'm on the h a i d a o in the Hami region. It's part of the ancient circle between Gansu Dunhong and Turpan. For thousands of years, people have been traveling through this area as the fastest way to reach west from the east. It's the largest concentration of yardang landforms in the world. This is yardang landform. The road is very complex. The car is very strong. 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 Thousands of years ago, people here were already connecting east and west, bringing civilization to the next step. It's inspiring to see Zakir today. His students are also pushing limits in a different way. 到了土鱼沟麻扎，嗯，麻扎就是墓葬的意思。这个就是一个佛教的莲花石座、嗯嗯，后来利用起来作为一个储石，然后建了这个房子。对，所以说它跟佛教有一定的关系。是是是。Tuyu Go is an ex excellent example of this combination of cultures that morph and change one to the next, but there are multiple layers here. Some of the earliest finds are Buddhism. 这个是脖子克里克的三十三号孔。嗯 So this cave is a depiction of Shakyamuni's final moments. Here, all these cultures come together to mourn his passing, and we know the various countries because of their different types of hats. 最中心的人物啊，那个帽子是汉人的官帽。回魂到了吐鲁番之后，他跟当地的汉人学会了很多的生产技术，所以说他把汉人的位置放在了中心。啊，你现在绣的就是这个东西。Yeah. 下面这是花帽。Yeah. 像刺绣是慢慢的一层一层在过渡，我们哈密刺绣呢，它是一层一层的很明显的在过渡。嗯，这是一种平针的针法，金绣用的特别多。Bao Jin taught me that there are many other stitching methods from Eastern China which gives the importance and the difference of Hami's embroidery. It is the symbol of the fusion between Xinjiang and the rest of China. 后来随着那个佛教走向衰落，代之也就是民间。这种绘画，它表现这种门上面，没有偶像崇拜了以后，它会每个门上画些花鸟，画些风景。石窟的艺术已经走向民间，形成当地的一种风俗。I discovered today a lot of objects with embroidery, anything that you can think of that you can use in your everyday life. I feel like when people live in monochromatic, plain color landscape, they have even more this need to create vividly colorful arts. Is not the most colorful environment. There are a lot of browns and beiges, so that might inspire people to go in search of quite bright colors. Mr. Xu and I had a very interesting conversation. He was talking about this cave. Of course, we can take photographs of that, but they don't always capture the textures. And he said, in a few years, these images are not going to be as vibrant. And so, what he wants to do is, as a painter, make copies. And I think there's a real passion that's involved in that desire to preserve, but also to share. This is our Xiaohua Ji. This is the twelfth head. This is the twelfth head. We are two heads. If we are two heads, we can make up to forty-eight heads. Wow! We can make up. This is how we can greatly increase our production. Although we could think that the handmade work is never replaceable, what Bao Jin did by bringing this factory production allows other people to benefit from this cultural heritage for a cheaper price and for a bigger scale. 
Can we see it working? Yeah, let's go. 在这里看，这个杆儿向右拉。Ready? Go. 好。OK. 我试一下吧。不用害怕，你的后面我在呢。好。OK. 想换哪个颜色，上面电脑一按，它就自动就跳到那个颜色上面了。How long ago did you bring this machinery into Hami? 十四年了，当时是最早的一批把那个绣花机引进哈密的。刚开始呢，很多人很喜欢这种绣花，然后产量上不去，借的钱呢到苏州去学绣花，然后买的绣花机是有点冒险。<笑>我骑摩托车已经十七年了，我有可能拿不到世界冠军，但是我希望徒弟能拿到世界冠军，就太棒了。有的时候我绣花绣到一两点，挺上瘾的那种感觉，真的我也不知道，可能就是自己喜欢吧。也想着以后能做点更多的产品，让更多的人去喜欢它，接受它。五福给我带来了爱好，还有美好的生活，所以我不想离开。这是二零一四年我们考古新发现的一个洞窟，我们现在看一下。哇，哇，真有意思。这个洞窟价值很高，贴了很多的金箔。嗯，您是第一个外国人进到这个洞窟的。感谢，感谢，感谢。We enter into the cave, and with maybe a torch or candles, and all of a sudden the gold begins to sparkle and lights up the cave. You can see how bright the colors are, how vivid the images are, and much of this art has been lost. But here, this cave shows us what the materials and what the art was like during that period in time. Wonderful. Wow. The cultural heritage is our most precious asset, and modernization is creating the bridge between the past and the identity of the present. It allows new generations to receive it and identify with it, and eventually use it as a value for the people around us. This is like a game I could enjoy. <laughs> While riding the bike, I started to understand a bit more what Zachar was saying. His relationship with this environment, his playground. Zachar, much like I've seen in Xinjiang with other people, took this challenge, or this constraint, and turned it into greatness. <laughs> it's inspiring to see them and what they've achieved. Even touching. One of the things that struck me is the fusion of cultures that occurred here, and in some ways still occurs here today, as a major route along the Silk Road. And this sort of layered relationship among cultures in Xinjiang will continue into the future.